Hillary Clinton has had a lead in the polls, but for the past several weeks, that lead has been declining. It's now to a point where it's not much of a lead at all. Most national polls show Clinton only one or two percentage points ahead of Donald Trump. Her state polling situation isn't really much better either. Polls released on Thursday showed Clinton behind in Ohio, Iowa, and Colorado. She had only small three-point leads in Michigan and Virginia, two states originally thought safe for her. While polls don't always show the end result, it might be time for Democrats to be a bit more worried. There's hardly a woman in America who hasn't been nauseated by this presidential election. That's an atypical statement from an investigative journalist who prides herself on objectivity, but, as we're constantly reminded, this is not a typical election. Trump's sole mission was to somehow reverse the catastrophic downward spiral his campaign had been in the previous 48 hours by convincing Republicans that boasting about sexual assault wasn't the deal-breaker it should be. Reflexively. Trump at first denied he'd even made those comments, and when reminded by moderator Anderson Cooper that, in fact, he had, he again chucked it all off as locker room talk, a term Trump, a practiced showman who knows the power of repetition, said several times before pivoting, nonsensically, to ISIS. Control was the point. Scowling, glowering, interrupting, Trump went for the jugular using every nasty epithet about Hillary Clinton that he'd stored up during months of steady attacks, liar, disaster, devil. Threatening to undermine democracy itself, he promised to arrest and imprison Clinton were he to win on November 8th believe me, he warned, she has tremendous hate in her heart. It was a cringe white, and viscerally personal, 90 minutes of televised harassment. Artfully stage managed by a TV star skilled at positioning himself for the camera in order to make every frame. The barbarity of Trump's performance was gross, almost everyone I spoke to afterwards said they wanted to take a shower, but it was also authentic. This, actually, is the real Donald Trump, it's who he is. Misogyny, combined with the patronizing paternalism, define core aspects of Trump's character. Women have known this and have been saying it, for a very long time. So why, only now, were people truly offended? Trump once joked about dating his own daughter and then gave shock jock Howard Stern permission to call her a piece of ass. His campaign recently explained those comments as said for entertainment value. That's just one example. Myriad accounts dating back decades speak to Trump's casual, cruel sexism, documents, testimony audio and video recordings and a few lawsuits among them. Women have also lodged more than one rape allegation against him, including his first wife, Ivana, who said in a sworn deposition that Trump violently held her down and raped her in 1989. She later walked back the word rape and said she felt violated by the experience. In the context of all this, Friday's Trump tape was no surprise. Though even when Trump was caught on tape, Many in the media minimized it, calling it lewd or inappropriate rather than what it is, bragging about sexual assault, says Los Angeles attorney Lisa Bloom, who represented one of the women who's AC. With a little more than three weeks until election day, Hillary Clinton holds a strong and steady lead in the polls as Donald Trump's numbers continue to fall across the country. A week after the second presidential debate and the former Secretary of State has a 5.5% lead nationally 47.7% to Trump's 42.2% according to the latest Real Clear Politics average. Will Donald Trump lose the election for sure? Trump has experienced a considerable drop in the polls throughout the month of October, a month that has seen the billionaire businessman face one controversy after another. As October began, 
The New York Times leaked Trump's 1995 tax records that suggest he avoided paying federal taxes for years. A week later a video was published in which Trump bragged about groping women. In the ensuing days, multiple women came forward to accuse the real estate mogul of inappropriately touching them throughout the years. According to 538's election forecast, Trump entered October with a 32.7% chance of winning the 2016 election. But after just two weeks, Trump now stands at a dismal 13.4% chance of victory according to polls and only 11.2% chance if the election were held today, showing that perhaps even the Donald isn't immune to such a mounting list of controversies. While prediction markets have seen Clinton's chances to become the next president increase over the past few weeks, the number of voters who officially support her has hovered around 47 to 48 percent throughout October. Given Trump's falling numbers, some have wondered why Clinton has been unable to pull away in any significant way. The former Secretary of State's steady popularity is likely due in part to the slew of negative news emerging from multiple email drops released by WikiLeaks. The emails were hacked as part of a major breach of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's email account. Trump has stated that the WikiLeaks email drops have received very little pickup by the dishonest media, claiming it shows a rigged system. Clinton and Trump will square off one last time in Las Vegas on Wednesday for the final presidential debate moderated by Fox News anchor Chris Wallace. We are doing so good in Florida. By the way, these teleprompters haven't been working for the last 20 minutes. And I actually like my speech better without teleprompters. And this way, what I like about it, wait a minute, let me see how these things work. You know what? I like it better without the teleprompter. And I notice every time I look up, they're trying, it's trying, it's straining, it's straining. Get, hey, get this thing out of here, will you? Get it out. So here's the story, here's the way I work, here's the way government works. So the teleprompter's a bummer. It doesn't work. That means the company doing the teleprompter is in the back. That means they didn't do a good job. So I won't pay them, right? I won't pay them. And tomorrow, I'll have a story in the newspaper. Donald Trump did not pay a contractor who put up the teleprompters. Well, why should I? They don't work. <laughs>